What's good? It's Montana 300. You watching hot new hip hop, man. You already know what it is, man. Rap guy, G shit, man. God over everything. Squad. It's Montana 300 from Chicago, Illinois. Growing up for me, growing up in Chicago, period, it's gonna be hard for anybody, especially coming from the, from the low end. It's the south side of Chicago. Um, all eyes was against me. I'm not supposed to be here. I got a lot of friends that's not here today. Lost a lot, whether it's falling out, growing up, getting older, people lost their lives, all type of things, you know, so I'm definitely blessed to be here. Um, middle school, I was doing sports. I was in the sports a lot. That kind of gave me a peace of mind about, you know, responsibility and, you know, showing up and, you know, making a change and making a difference and being effective. Um, uh, I had I always had felt like I put a lot of weight on my shoulders as far as me feeling like I'm going to be the one to make a change and make a difference. I had about I had two two brothers and three sisters. Um, growing up, my, my I always had I had my parents. You know, they um, they wasn't together, but I didn't have too much support financially. But I always felt love. You know, um, I really realized that I could rap. I remember first writing raps, and I'd probably make it to about four or six lines on my paper, then I'd be like, I kind of like give up. I didn't know nothing about counting bars and stuff like that. So, um, you know, as I got older and I, and I learned what bars is and how much it was, I remember telling my homie Tally, like, let's, um, we was freshman in high school, let's, let's both make a rap and see who got the best one, you know? So my main thing was knowing how to get into other people's minds and make them say ooh and ah, you know? So that kind of, I had an early um, desire to be nice with the metaphors. You see what I'm saying? So, um, and as I got older, that's when I started going through things like, you know, I'm hustling or, I'm, or I run into trouble here and there or, you know, the, the struggles and things like that. So as I got older, I had more material and I gained more things and stories to put into my music to give you you know, as to who I am and what made me strong. So um, I remember just thinking too, sitting, sitting in my dorm one day, like, I think I'm gonna just stick to this rapping shit over the sports shit because I felt like I can go to the NFL and I felt like I could be a, a, a running back in the NFL, but I didn't feel like I would be the best running back that ever ran, you know, or the best running back in the league. Like rap, I felt like I had the potential to be like, this, I could be the best rapper to ever rap, you know, or the best rapper at that time. You see what I'm saying, one day. So I just made up my mind and started rolling with it. My 300 means no surrender, no retreat. It's based off the movie 300 with the Spartans. Um, no surrender, no retreat, against all odds, only the hard, only the strong. Um, I think it represents me and, you know, my team in so many ways because for so long, you know, I've been trying to get here to where, I, where I'm at today, you know. And I always felt like I knew I was, you know, lyrical, more lyrical than, the, you know, the average rapper and stuff like that, you know. So um, the whole thing about the 300 and everything, it's, um, I could have gave up plenty of times, you know, and I, and, I, and I chose not to. I think, well, the first video I got that went viral was Chirac Remix. And the most views I had ever got in a day was 14,000 views before that. And when the Chirac Remix came out, and I look up, it's, it's been out nine hours and got 14,000 views already. So I'm like, well, you know, this never happened before. And I look 24 hours later, 30,000 views in one day, you know? So um, I can sit back and see the progress, you know, over time, you know, and then the next day it's like, oh, 30, 32,000 views. Then next thing you know, it's up to 60,000 views a day, you know, stuff like that. So just sitting back, watching the progress, it lets me know that I'm doing something right. You know, I'm moving in a positive direction. You see what I'm saying? Um, I got on Empire, on the set of Empire, I guess a talent agent had um, made a post on Facebook and was like, you know, who's the best rapper in Chicago? And my name popped up more than anybody else's. So she watched my Chirac video and reached out to me, you know, so they had me come in and rap for um, Lee Daniels. So the next day I got the part. And um, while I was on set, I ended up, you know, meeting Chris Rock and me and him chopped it up, you know, and talked for a while. And, um, you know, he looked up some of my music, said he likes it and said he was putting Rick Rubin in tune with me. 
and um, said that he, he, both of us need to exchange numbers and, you know, I need to go to L.A. and link up with Rick Rubin, you know. So he did what he said. He linked me with Rick Rubin, and uh, Rick Rubin later ended up flying me and my manager out to L.A. And um, right when I pulled up, like before I even got into his house, like Kanye pulled up right, right behind me. And uh, we went in there and started working. We probably was in the studio from like 3 p.m. to like almost 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, Kanye he was a cool dude, you know, he was, um, he said, the first song he heard by me was Chirac remix, and he said he never heard that many cold bars in one song in his life. And I was just like, I, I ended up showing him my Holy Ghost song, which I feel like is probably like my best piece of work lyrically. Um, and then after I showed him the Holy Ghost, like every famous person that came to the studio after that, he would tell, he would recommend that song, like play that Holy Ghost for him, you know, like this dude, he just got bars, man, like you gotta listen to his bars, you know, so he was telling people that about me, you know, while I was sitting there, so it was kind of, like, it, was, it was cool though, you know, he gave me a lot of props and showed a lot of love. Um, I, it's funny because when he pulled up, my manager was like, bro, that's Kanye, and I, I looked in the car and I couldn't see really. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You know, he's like, no, I swear, I swear to God, you know. And then, so I look and he get out of the car, I'm like, damn, you know. So my manager, he's smiling, I'm like, bro, I said, stop smiling and calm down. So I think he got starstruck, you know, more than anything. So, um, you know, and he came in, you know, he just come in like, you know, regular, like a regular day, like he used to seeing me, you know. And um, so I didn't know if he knew who I was or was up on me yet, so we go into the, uh, Rick Rubin crib at the same time, you know, kind of go to the kitchen and, uh, you know, he asked a couple questions, you know, about coming down there and stuff like that. And I asked him, has he checked out my music yet? He was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you are. And then that's when he said, you know, I heard the Chirac remix and I never, I never heard that many cold bars in one song in my life, you know. So to me, that was something big, you know, to hear, especially from who it's coming from, you know. Um, my Fire in the Church album, on this you can expect the unexpected, uh, that's really my thing. I, I, want, I don't want any of my songs to sound the same. I want everything to really be royal in its own fashion. Um, I got a couple of good features on there, a whole FGE team on there. Um, Kevin Gates is on there uh, for now. Um, I, you can expect more, a little bit more messages in this album than what Curse With A Blessing had. Um, I only had like, I think one song for the females on Curse With A Blessing. On here I might have like two, possibly three. Um, I got I got some turn up stuff. I got stuff on there. So I probably got about three or four songs that's like in its own category as far as concepts. 